Hi, welcome back to the shop. This is episode 6 of my Shop Talk series. This is May 2015 and we have a whole lot of stuff to show. There wasn't a Shop Talk video last month, but um, I had a whole lot of other videos, so um, I'm fine with that and I didn't get any complaints. Maybe the people don't even miss this, uh, this talking video, so I catch up with that one. First of all, I got mail from some fellow YouTube machinists. First one, I got some stickers from Tom Lipton over at Oxtool. Well known and uh, I think you all know his channel, so um, thank you Tom. I appreciate them very much. I already put one up on my toolbox. I'm still looking for a place with the other two. But I will find a spot for those too. And I also got mail from James Green. He sent me a whole a whole package of stuff. He, he, uh, a notebook, a sticker with his um, YouTube channel, with his channel logo, which is pretty cool. It's a bit dark, but it's a really cool logo, so I like it. Um, a airborne sticker, the airborne logo, and a um, the, the logo of his former army unit, the 101st Airborne Division. So I already put up um, his channel sticker on my toolbox and I'm still looking for a place for the other stickers. But thank you very much James, I appreciate it and if you don't know James' channel, check it out. He has a lot of very common sense, down-to-earth videos uh, with very mixed topics. It ranges from um, tool repair, he, may, he makes small cannons. He does a very nice job on them. His um, cannon in a, in, a, um, in a ammo box or ammo can is a pretty cool thing. And uh, yeah, check check his channel out. It's it's really cool. Um, I will put a link right here. And also, I got mail from a German viewer, Klaus. He sent me this cup with the um, Friedrich Deckel logo. This is the logo of the manufacturer of my milling machine and my engraving machine. And I like it. Um, I will not use this cup for drinking because I don't know if this, um, if the print holds up to the dishwasher. This will go in the, in a showcase. So thank you very much. Okay, there we are with my toolbox, and that's the inside of the lid. Is where the stickers will go. I have Tom. I have one sticker from uh, Jody of Welding Tips and Tricks. I got it back then when I ordered my tick finger. Uh, I got James sticker and also I got the sticker with the Friedrich Deckel logo. And that's the spot where my stickers yeah. will go. Okay, we're back. And in the last shop talk video I did some engraving on um, brass sheet material and I held it down with double stick tape and I struggled a bit to get it off and I got a lot of um, recommendations how I could uh, easier get the, um, the engraved piece off the sheet metal and uh, I tried a few of them and I will show you the results right here. Okay, last time people saw me struggling while I was pulling off the double stick tape um, which I used to engrave to hold the parts while engraving and there were a few suggestions I wanted to try out but first we need to prepare a sample piece. I have this piece of flat stock cold rolled. I'm going to clean it with denatured alcohol just to degrease it and uh, give my double stick tape some hold to it. Okay. 
Okay, and I have three pieces of brass about the size of the uh, sign I engraved last time. And now I'm going to so three sample pieces and I'm also going to clean them on the glue side with denatured alcohol. I could also use acetone, but um, for the most part I prefer the alcohol because it's not, it's not that violent and it doesn't flash up that off that fast. I don't use brake cleaner in my shop, I don't like it. I really don't like it, so... First piece, yeah, second one and third one and I'm going as I always do I'm going to press them on with the vise and that's how I do it here and also how I do it on at work okay and now we have our three sample pieces and we try to get it off without that much levering and prying that I had to do last time Sean Hawkins mentioned um, using dental floss uh, pulled under the sign and cutting it loose from the double stick tape piano wire. Just going under and pulling it off. But I will support it with a bit of alcohol too, just to to give me a fighting chance. This is just a piece of 0.4 mm piano wire or spring steel wire held in two C-clamps to give me a grip. I'm just going under the edge of the piece and, and this works beautiful. Uh -huh. Okay, that was that's awesome. That works. That's just working. There is not much um, remaining glue on my piece. That comes off with a bit of with some with some wiping. But that that's an awesome that's an awesome tip. That works. I will adapt that to my shop. That's perfect. Thank you. Okay, next thing we're going to try is heat with the heat gun. Um, this was suggested by Shade38211 and um, I'm going to heat this up until it's warm to the touch and then I'm going to pry it off. Okay. <clears throat> okay, that also worked very good. And it's still hot. And there is also very little remaining uh, glue on the piece. But that's also easy to be cleaned up uh, with some alcohol. Okay, two for two, and now for the third one. Um, M. Mikey seventy seven suggested to use compressed air. Um, I'm not sure how this will work, so let's give it a shot. I will just try to blow beneath the. the seam between the tape and the part but maybe if I can Oh, ok. 
Okay, it lifted it completely where I punched through the tape. Uh, okay, that's... Oops. Okay, that's... Uh, it kind of worked. It's, and now, I can, oh, now I can pull off the whole tape from the piece. And also from my part. Hmm. Okay, this last one with compressed air kind of worked. Not the perfect solution. Okay, and we're back. Uh, as you saw, the wire behind the, um, the sheet metal worked best. And I will keep keep that method in, in my back head for future use. Also, again, I visited my friend's foundry. And I cast up some small parts. And there's some footage also. parts here or at least one of the parts they were pretty small and you will see the project which they belong to uh, in an upcoming video so stay tuned for that I don't know about you but I love hand drawing and um, I love notebooks and I love drawing by hand. Um, in fact, I have a few notebooks here and I just want to show you. <laughs> this one was given by my girlfriend to me and um, it's well used. I, 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 lo I love to just take um, simple drawings with, um, with pencil in them and I do a lot of CAD work and CAM work at work, uh, sitting in front of the computer all the time and it's get, it gets odd. I don't have to do it at home. I prefer for my personal projects, uh, hand drawing. There are pretty complex projects. This is going to be a tailstock turret one day. This is uh, a section view. Uh, here we have the, the turret head. There is the Morse Taper 2 shank. There are small parts, um, some isometric uh, drawing of a lathe dog, uh, um, sketches for a folder knife or folding knife, um, yeah, drawings for various machine parts. A replacement quill for my small Chinese drill press. In fact, I built this. And yeah, that's uh, that's one of the notebooks. And this this is my uh, another notebook. There is also I started just to fill it up with drawings. And I really like to draw by hand. And often I don't even build the stuff. I just uh, like to keep to have the ideas not to be lost. Um, maybe one day I will build it. Also in the back I always have a big hunk of uh, printouts with um, with drawings and photos. This is a, a retracting tool holder. Um, I have some printouts from catalogs with various um, work holding pieces. Just, just reference stuff. Um, price lists, yeah. Um, 
just just a short glimpse into my notebooks. Maybe, yeah. This, uh, I like notebooks. Also, I bought a clamp style knurling tool, a Chinese made, pretty cheap, and I have a short video of testing it right here. Um, today we have a small tool review. Um, some time ago, Brad, also known as Spaceman Shop Guy, did a great review and uh, a good tutorial on knurling with an Eagle Rock K1 44 clamp knurling tool. Um, seeing this made me want a clamp type knurler too, but um, being pretty cheap, I decided to go for a Chinese knockoff. I couldn't just justify the expense for a high quality cl clamp knurler that I'm going to use only a few times and um, I would love to have have a high quality made by Eagle Rock or um, Toys so but they are just expensive also I would love to look into knurl milling but those tools are even more expensive so I looked up on eBay and um, Due to a post on a forum, I found this. This is um, made by Garvin. It's a, I think it's an Indian company that copies machine tools. And comparing this to the Eagle Rock clamp knurler, it looks almost the same. It's the same overall design. It has the screw in the back and the um, clamping clamping strap for the tool post but when we get in detail it's nothing like it it's um, it's bad it's really not a nice tool let's get to it let's take it apart just because we can we, we take off this nut we have a washer a fender washer this is the clamping piece the radii looks like it's done on a belt sander. And we can pull out this shoulder bolt. There's another washer. And we have and we remove this nut on the back here. This is a pretty nice nut. It's a heavy duty, it's a high nut, it's and this looks like a This is a um, um, 10 millimeter thread, so this is quite capable. And yeah, that's it. That's all the parts. But um, the finish is just not very nice. This looks like somebody ran a big doll face mill over it. The the bore here or the, um, the chamfer on the bore is all charted up it it got chatter marks all around um, it got stinged up here the pins where the um, knurling knurling wheels ride on are pressed in um, if I keep this tool, I'm, I'm going to replace the knurling wheels by high quality European made ones. Um, then I will have to push out these pins, maybe make new pins or use 6mm dowel pins, hardened dowel pins, and put them back together. The <coughs> this cutout will need two pieces intersect like in a scissor. This is also pretty rough machine. This looks like it's done on a lathe and also chatter marks all around. The chamfer is also very bad. But uh, yeah, at least the corners are chamfered. Not very nice, but you don't cut yourself. Uh, with the second piece the same. 
It's just not very nice finished. Sure. Ah, there's the shoulder bolt. This fits like Okay, I put up a piece of um, 7075 um, aluminum in the in the chuck. I skim cut it, I cut a notch on the end and I chamfered the front just to give it a nice look. Uh, I have the knurling tool here and we're going to set it up in the tool post. This nut on the side is, I think, meant to be um, just finger tight so that thing can swivel. Okay, and now we run the lathe at moderate speed and. Just go in. clamping screw to get a look at it. And there we have our knurling. <clears throat> okay, this time I set up a piece of drill rod. Um, I prepared it as the aluminum and I skim cut it, I put the chamfer on the end and I cut a groove here also with the chamfering tool. Now we're going to try to knurl this. Okay, this is the knurling in the drill rod and it came out pretty good in this tough material. Um, in fact, the little pyramids are very well formed out and pretty uniform all around. So that's, that's impressive for such a cheap tool and um, yeah, I think I'm going to keep it. Okay, as you just saw on the lathe, this um, cheap clamp knurler or scissor type knurling tool works. Um, it works. It's not a it's not a high quality tool. Neither it's a nice tool, but um, it gets the job done. After three samples here, I have aluminum which worked um, the worst. I will show a close-up picture now. Okay, we're back. Then I have some uh, free-cutting leaded steel or mild steel. Also with a close-up picture. And what worked the best, to my surprise, was the drill rod. Um, this gave a very, very nice knurling and again a closer picture right now. So, yeah, that's the results. Look at the pictures and um, decide yourself to have to be a, um, a high quality knurling tool. And maybe I will build one day my own scissor type knurling tool just because I can. But for now, as I need a knurling tool right now, without, yeah, I need it now. Um, um, thanks also to Brad, 
who um, who showed the high quality Eagle Rock knurling tool, which is really a complete other class of tool. Um, but also you have to see the price difference. This cheapo costs about 50 bucks and the Eagle Rock that's made in the USA costs I don't know 300 bucks. So that's to consider. Um, yeah, just decide it yourself. Of course it's nice to support uh, manufacturing in your uh, home country so I would love to get a soy snurling tool that's made in Germany but they are expensive Perfect. and as you saw this tool is not too bad also I have an upcoming video on the repair of three completely different vices and uh, there's a short teaser right here video I also um, used these low profile clamps and somebody asked if I could show them a bit better in video so there we go these clamps are shop made they are a direct copy of the um, bull clamps made by AMF um, they work like they have this movable jaw moves and that direction it goes down and inwards when you there is a screw on top and if you screw that in the jaw goes down and because of the um, it's a bit hard to show because of the um, angle this is on it also moves um, moves in it goes flush, almost flush into the um, T-slots of the milling machine and then it gets clamped with that um, with this overhead um, stone with this uh, holding, holding stone and that holds it in position and then you tighten the screw and the jaw moves down and against your workpiece and also it pulls the workpiece down on the table and there is when, when we remove the jaw there is there is the jaw with the countersunk bore and down here is a uh, is a blind hole and that blind hole takes the spring here the spring holds removable jaw under tension so it doesn't uh, weeble wobble around I don't really use them very much but sometimes they are they are neat and also they were a pretty fun project to build um, with the angled portion in front here you have to do some it's um, it's a bit of a work holding challenge sometimes you have to to figure it out one day I will harden the jaws uh, if I get around to do it but for now I can use them like this and I only made a pair better would be four of them but I was a bit lazy at the time most of the time two are enough Also, and as I have reached the 2800 subscribers, at least almost, a few are missing, um, I have really to thank you all, I get that much um, feedback.
feedback and comments on my videos it's really hard to catch up with the comments um, I try to do the comments a few times a week uh, binge answering the comments but um, I hope you don't get mad at me if I don't answer all of them um, I, tr I try to especially the, the questions on the project or what what uh, why I did something how I did it I try to answer these and um, some just I, 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 can't, I can't answer all of them I really get uh, 50 60 comments on some videos and it's hard to catch up but I try but you should also know I really appreciate all of them and I read them all I read them all and I get a lot of good uh, ideas out of them and also I love the fact that all of you are pr participating that much into that stuff um, yeah uh, so thank you all and I don't think I have any anything else to say Apart from, thank you for watching and see you next time.